When I cried to the Lord, he heard my voice. He rescued me from those who attacked me. Trust your cares to the Lord, and he will support you. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. It's good, good to see all of you again in person, not just through video screen. Um, something for us really to treasure those moments in which we really just see how special it is, um, the gift of our humanity, that we're not merely just minds or computers that just kind of float around disembodied, but that we're persons that need to be in the physical presence of one another. There, there's a difference that when we're here versus just watching, that there can be a, a, a beautiful grace there. So it's important for us just to thank God for that moment, to be able to thank God for the opportunity of, of coming here and to receive his body and blood. Brethren, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. Prompt our actions with your inspiration, we pray, O Lord, and further them with your constant help, that all we do may always begin from you, and by you be brought to completion. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. which I enjoin on you today, loving him and walking in his ways and keeping his commandments, statutes, and decrees, you will live and grow numerous, and the Lord your God will bless you in the land you are entering to occupy. If, however, you turn away your hearts and will not listen, but are led astray and adore and serve other gods, I tell you now that you will certainly perish. You will not have a long life on the land that you are crossing the Jordan to enter and occupy. I call heaven and earth today to witness against you. I have set before you life and death, the blessing and the curse. Choose life then, that you and your descendants may live by loving the Lord your God, heeding his voice and holding fast to him. For that will mean life for you, a long life for you to live on the land that the Lord swore he would give to your fathers Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Blessed are they who hope in the Lord. Blessed are they who hope in the Lord. Blessed the man who follows not the counsel of the wicked, nor walks in the way of sinners, nor sits in the company of the insolent, but delights in the law of the Lord and meditates on his law day and night. Blessed are they who hope in the Lord. He is like a tree planted near running water that yields its fruit in due season and whose leaves never fade. Whatever he does prospers. Blessed are they who hope in the Lord. Not so the wicked, not so. They are like chafe which the wind drives away. For the Lord watches over the way of the just but the way of the wicked vanishes.
Repent, says the Lord, the kingdom of God is at hand. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. I said the wrong one. The Lord be with you. And may Almighty God... <laughs> Sorry. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Lord, to you, Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, The Son of Man must suffer greatly and be rejected by the elders, chief priests, and the scribes, and be killed, and on the third day be raised. Then he said to all, If anyone wishes to come after me, he must deny himself, take up his cross daily, and follow me. For whoever wishes to save his life will lose it, but whoever loses his life for my sake will save it. What profit is there for one to gain the whole world, yet lose and forfeit himself? The Gospel of the Lord. That was kind of silly. I sort of just went on autopilot and just went into the Easter season for a moment, but we're, we're in Lent right now. So, I don't know if you've ever heard of that, that interesting study. I, I think it was either with M&Ms or with Skittles, and it was with preschoolers. And what they would do, preschoolers or kindergartners, maybe the teachers have, have heard of this one before, but it deals with what we call delayed gratification or instant gratification. And what they would do is they would have, I believe, two M&Ms, and they would just sort of put them right on the table, and they would say, in a little cup, and they would say, you can eat these anytime. If you're hungry, just go for it. But if you wait for 40 minutes or an hour or whatever that time was, then we're going to give you double. And there were some that said, well, I just want those right now. And they just grabbed them and ate them. And then there were others that found ways to, to, to play, to enjoy the time, to pass that time. And then at the very end of that, they received double of that. And they actually did what you call like a life study. So they kind of followed these preschoolers or kindergartners. And it was amazing to see that generally speaking, those who waited and learned how to say no to something immediately for something much greater and deeper later actually became very happy, successful, different things like that as a whole, whereas those that just kind of jumped into it and maybe more impulsive and just sort of grabbed whatever they could right in front of them right then, didn't seem to have the same kind of greater life experiences later on in life. And that became maybe a struggle to grab what was right in front versus waiting and actually receiving something so much greater. And that's really one of the great wisdoms of Lent and, and actually of the Christian life is that God, when he says, let go of something, or when he says, say no to something, he's actually wanting us to have a deeper happiness. He knows that there's something more that if we jump into the thing right in front of us, then we're ultimately not gonna be fulfilled. We might be fulfilled for a moment, but we won't have the lasting happiness. And so the first reading today speaks about the Lord setting before you two paths. One of them is life. One of them is death and doom. And it, you'd think, you know, which one? If you were right in front of God and you said, well, would you like life and happiness? Or would you like death and doom? Now, how many of you would be like, uh, I'd like a doom, please, for 500? It's like, no. I mean, you, you want life. You want prosperity. You want happiness. But why is it that we usually go after the death and doom aspect? Because that's sin. And why is it that there's something about sin that becomes very attractive? 
it's, it actually goes back to this idea that the Lord talks about of saying, if you want to follow me, if you want to experience true happiness, you have to be willing to pick up your cross daily and follow me. If you really want to find your life, you need to lose it. You need to let go of the whole world in order to actually gain something much greater. That's also why we heard what Jesus said in the very beginning of his gospel preaching that we prayed at that, that, that verse before the gospel. Repent. Turn away from the things right in front of you that are easy to grab. And wait for the greater thing. I want you to think of this in terms of temptations. All of us struggle with different temptations. Maybe we struggle with, we, we feel this anger and we just want to, you know, lash out right then and there. It feels good to be able to maybe say something unkind back or to gossip. Or, you know, maybe we struggle with purity and maybe it's like, well, I, I want to just you know, go to this particular click on the computer or whatever. Maybe it's, well, there's all this food in front of me, I just want to take the whole thing. Or maybe it's the, the, the struggle with forgiving someone. It's like, well, it feels good to not forgive them. All of those things, these temptations, they always promise something in the immediate. They promise a happiness. That's for that 10 minutes. But someone very wise said, in order to fight against temptation, and it goes back to this idea of, do you grab the M&Ms right now, or do you wait for something greater? Anytime you're faced with the lure of a temptation, try to ask yourself the question, what will my life be like in 10 minutes? Because usually we're, we're kind of stuck with the now. And it's like, well, I, I, have to, I have to give in to this temptation because it'll feel good. It'll be awesome. There'll be peace. There'll be happiness. There won't be suffering. And there won't for that brief period of time. But then think about after 10 minutes. Haven't we had that experience? We grab all the food. Maybe we did this on Fat Tuesday. I think I might have done this too. Where we kind of grab it. We don't really think. And then afterwards, we're just kind of like, I feel miserable. Or maybe we just, you know, someone makes us mad or something. Or, or maybe one of our, our, our parents just kind of, you know, pokes the heart in, in a certain way. And we just lash out and we say something that's, it's really, really horrible. We say something to one of our classmates, and it feels very, very good right at that moment to say, I'd let them have it. But then how do we feel after? That sense of, wow, I broke trust. I hurt someone that loves me. There's a lot of different things that we can fall into. Ask yourself always the question, what will my life be like in 10 minutes? And probably for most of us, because all of us here have fallen into temptation in some way or another, we know that experience, that there's this promise of greatness, of living life, of awesomeness, of joy, of pleasure, of happiness, and we just bite into that. But then afterwards, we're empty, we're maybe more dry than we were before. We don't really feel good about ourselves. We feel hollow. And that lasts a lot longer. That's what the Lord is saying to Moses. Which do you want? Do you want a path that just leads to emptiness? That leads to the lack of life? Or are you willing to wait, to pick up your cross, to be able to say no to the instant gratification of the M&Ms that are right in front of you? To be able to suffer through that? 
to be able to experience something so much better and so much more lasting and so much more peaceful on the other side of that 10 minutes. It's hard when we're in the middle of the battle, but if you keep every day just going back to that sense of, Lord, help me when the temptation comes to think about the next 10 minutes, and am I willing to suffer just for that little bit of time to experience a much longer lasting future full of hope? There's a, a wonderful author, his name is Matthew Kelly, and he says this, and I think this is a great way of if we want to, someone tells us like, well, just be holy. And you're like, well, that's hard. I can't do that. And then he kind of goes back and he says, well, for the next 60 seconds, can you think good thoughts? Say good words. Do good things. You say, well, for 60 seconds, I could do that. Okay, well, just do that. Try that now for 60 seconds. And then when that 60 seconds is over, try it again. Try it again. Try it again. Do you see how a lot of times we get crippled by sort of looking at this huge, giant thing? It's like if your teacher is saying, you have to read this entire library. You're like, I can't do that. So then we don't, we don't even start. But what if they were just to say, read this paragraph today. And then tomorrow, read this next paragraph, and this next paragraph, and next paragraph. And pretty soon, after an entire year, you've read a library. So the Lord wants us to start small, bite-sized pieces. But think about that in terms of temptation. Think about just the 10 minutes. Are you willing to just wait through the temptation for the 10 minutes so you can experience double the happiness on the other side. And now let us stand and bring our petitions before the Lord. We pray that the Lord may inspire men and women to choose to follow Christ through vocations to the ordained and consecrated life. Let us pray to the Lord. That the Holy Spirit may renew the commitment of our nation's leaders in choosing life. Let us pray to the Lord. That God may give strength to those whose crosses seem too burdensome to bear. Let us pray to the Lord. That Christ may bless our practices of prayer, fasting, and almsgiving during this Lenten season. Let us pray to the Lord. That all who lose their life this day may gain eternal life in Christ. Let us pray to the Lord. We pray in a special way for the repose of the souls of Charles and Kareem. Shrader, for whom I've been asked to offer this Mass. Let us pray to the Lord. We pray also for all of those that are suffering from the effects of the cold, and we can especially remember those in Texas right now who many are without power, without water. We just pray that they might receive the help that they need and that we might be able to reach out to our brothers and sisters in prayer and in action. Let us pray to the Lord. We pray also for the prayer for this month from Pope Francis, which is that we pray for women who are victims of violence, that they may be protected by society and have their sufferings considered and heeded. Let us pray to the Lord. Heavenly Father, we ask all of this through Christ our Lord.
Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands, that will become for us the bread of life. brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. Regard with favor, O Lord, we pray, the offerings we set upon this sacred altar, that bestowing on us your pardon, our oblations may give honor to your name, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for you will that our self-denial should give you thanks, humble our sinful pride, contribute to the feeding of the poor, and so help us imitate you in your kindness. And so we glorify you with countless angels, as with one voice of praise we acclaim, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts we pray by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you.
Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity. Together with Francis, our Pope, and Ronald, our Bishop, and all the clergy, remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. The kingdom and power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave thee, my peace I give thee. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. me, O God. Renew a steadfast spirit within me.
having received the blessing of your heavenly gifts, we humbly beseech you, Almighty God, that they may always be for us a source both of pardon and of salvation, through Christ our Lord. So a great thing to write down sometime is the 10 minutes and the 60 seconds. Just keep asking yourself, whatever temptation that you battle with a lot, the way of overcoming that is, again, just ask yourself, what will life be like 10 minutes after I give in to that temptation? And then we start recognizing that it's really not worth it. It's a small little bit of, of joy, but then an emptiness that goes on longer and longer. And that can help us with God's grace to be able to say no to the thing right in front of us, but say yes to something far deeper and richer. And then don't worry about being holy tomorrow. Just worry about these 60 seconds right now. Just focus on that. And then repeat, and repeat, and repeat. The Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you, Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go and announce the gospel of the Lord. St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the divine power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits, who prowl about the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Remember, O most gracious Virgin Mary, that never was it known that anyone who fled to your protection, implored your help, or sought your intercession, was left unaided, inspired by this confidence, I fly to you, O Virgin of Virgins, my love. To you do I come, before you I stand, sinful and sorrowful. Mother, the word incarnate, despise not my